Today, we're going to talk about 360 proxy workflow on both mono and stereoscopic 360 video camera. So no more freeze up or lagging while you edit your 8K professional 360 video footage coming out from camera like the Insta360 Pro, the Obsidian SNR, or any other professional 360 video camera, or the 5.2K footage from the GoPro version of the views. 260 proxy workflow is a very essential part of any 260 pro production. So you can have uninterrupted editing experience without pulling your hair out so you can have a nice long hair like mine. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Today, I'm gonna share with you my personal proxy workflow on all the 360 video camera you see right here. If you don't wanna watch the entire video to learn how to create your own personal proxy for the camera you own, you can just go ahead to the description and download my preset and use on Premiere and create your own proxy workflow. If you like it, don't forget to the like button to give me a thumb up because I gotta help you to save more hair. So no more hair pulling when your machine frees up on both your PC and your Mac. For the rest of us, if you wanna learn step-by-step -step process to create your own proxy preset for the camera you own, like different cameras you own in the camera, let's dive right in. So now we are in Adobe Premiere. Here I have a sequence file right here that is the footage shot on it's a drone footage i just do drone removal already so you will not be able to see the drone and also stabilize in mocha vr so that is an ak 7680 times 3840 it's captured with the insta 260 pro with the m600 on the air so let's play this footage so if you play this footage it's playing but as you see the drop frame indicator is on yellow meaning that this footage right now is dropping frame Again, I have a pretty fast PC right here, so even with a dropping frame, I still have pretty smooth playback even in 8K resolution. But if you have 8K times 8K, let's say stereoscopic footage, I would not be able to have smooth playback and my machine will start to freeze. So let's say that to the same footage, right? If I turn on this button and then I play it again. So as you see right now, when I turn on the proxy mode, there's no drop frame anymore and it's a green indicator meaning that there's a smooth playback. So what is this button and if you don't see it, where can I find it? So this button is called toggle proxy. Basically, if your file have a proxy attached to it, if you hit on this button when it turn blue, meaning that instead of playing the original footage, you place it the proxy instead. If you pay attention to the screen window right here, as you see, the image quality increased dramatically. If you turn this off, if you turn this off, everything looks like a little bit blurry. So if you don't see this button, you can right click right here, and then you can find a button right here and drag and drop it right here. Drag and drop it in here. So you have the proxy toggle button in your control bar. So first, instead of actually teach you how to create your own proxy, first I will show you how to attach and create a proxy using my proxy preset available freely on the description. So go down the description and download that proxy preset if you don't want to go through the whole process to learn how to create your own proxy. But I would suggest you strongly start to learn how to create your own proxy so you can create different proxy from different machine and different camera so you have a more streamlined workflow. It's a two way to create proxy. You can create proxy in the injection process right here if you go to Project setting, injection setting. Right here, doing injection, you can actually inject to create proxy right here. This setting, uh, meaning that if your footage is still inside your camera, like if you have a Nikon key mission, the footage is already stitched in your camera, you just copy and create proxy. But since the proxy file is generated by After Effects from Mocha, it's already sitting in my hard drive, so I only need to create proxy. So that's the setting I pick. And then here's a proxy preset, but you will not see this proxy preset because uh, you don't have it first. So you go ahead and add the inject preset and go to the folder you download. And then here had the 2K Cineform Mono Proxy preset I created for you. Pick that, click open. And I say the proxy file is same as the project. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. So what injection mean that whenever you drop your footage into your 
media browser from here, every footage will be turned into proxy in the media encoder right here. For me, I actually don't do that. I want to fully control which file I should do proxy, which I should not. As you see the footage right here, even in 8K resolution in the Insta360 Pro footage, my machine can actually play back pretty smoothly without even the proxy, you see, right here. See, pretty smoothly. I mean, even dropping frame, but if you see the screen, it's pretty smooth drone footage. So a pretty powerful machine. Sometimes I just don't want to have proxy in all my file. Especially when I go for the 5.2K GoPro Fusion on the E footage, I don't need to do proxy at all. I can just go for the raw because I have a powerful machine. Again, that is not your case. So if you just want to have a complete 100% proxy workflow, you can just do the injection process. To me, I love to save time. If I don't need to create proxy, I don't want to. So my way is actually go into the footage, like this footage, right click and review in a project. For this file, I want to only create proxy from this file. So you can go ahead in the project window right here, right click here, say proxy and create proxy. Why from here in this window, I can go ahead, this is under QuickTime, so go ahead and pick QuickTime and then pick that 2K Cineform Mono Proxy. Again, if you don't see it, go ahead and add Inject Preset from the file I gave to you. And then you just go ahead and set the same thing and then hit OK. So when you hit OK, you create proxy and pop up media encoder directly and in here it just automatically create a proxy file for you. While you still can go back into Premiere and continue editing. And when this is done, it will replace your current footage with your proxy footage, but doesn't stop you from continue editing. So actually that is one amazing workflow from Adobe. And very fast, this is actually done. Uh, so now this is serving the proxy file because I have this turned on. Okay, so now you know how to actually use my proxy presets. Now I'm gonna teach you how to create your own proxy preset. Why you wanna create your own proxy presets? First, there's so many different kinds of 360 footage. There's a monoscopic, there's stereo, and then there's a side-by-side -side VR 180s. And then there's so many different kinds of camera. There's an Obsidian, there's Insta360 Pro, there's Zcam, V1 Pro, V1, eHalo, GoPro, Odyssey. These all different kinds of camera have different kind of file size. And you want to create different kind of proxy file to just come on the different camera you use. And I, have, I am not a magician, so I don't know what camera you use. So I'll just teach you the workflow for you to create a proxy that fit your own workflow. And also another really big issue is, I don't know the setting of your machine. My machine is pretty fast, so I can run 8K no problem. But if you are editing your video in a 2013 MacBook Pro, you might want to have a really, really low res proxy. And that is all the consideration why you want to create your own proxy. So go ahead and open Media Encoder. So right here, see the plus icon, hit that and go ahead and pick create encoding preset and then go ahead and name a new preset. So there are two ways to create DNxHR. Uh, you can directly use QuickTime right here. If you turn off match source, you can pick from instead of GoPro Cineform, you can pick DNxHR right here. You can have the resolution. You don't need HQ, you can use LB, that's enough. That's basically like the ProRes 422 proxy, same exact quality and everything. Just ProRes is for Mac and DNxHR is for Avid and PC. And if you don't have QuickTime, you can also just in PC, just use DNxHR, this one. You can also right here select LB right he here. And then you can also create proxy that way, like that. So why I choose 1920 by 960? So first this is a two by one equal rectangular format. That is mostly the camera create two by one to create monoscopic video. Again, if you are using Nikon key mission, you use 16 by nine. Uh, but again, this is shot with Insta360 Pro. And also why I picked this number, it's actually the original Insta360 Pro AK, which is 7690 divided by four is 1920. The reason why is I want to have a even number can be divided by the original. When I put it in the premiere, I will not have like missing pixel. That's the other trick that you should have. Again, because I do have QuickTime, I would use QuickTime instead in here using the DNxHR by QuickTime, using the LB. And again, in here, I pick 9020. And then usually Insta360 Pro 
is 30 frames per second. But again, if you're using their brand new feature to double the frame rate to 59.95 for 60 frames per second, that is the frame rate you should choose. That's also why you want to learn how to actually create your own proxy. Because again, I have no idea what frame rate you shot on. And then the most important part is actually right here. In the VR video, make sure to check that because this is a VR video and the VR is a monoscopic. So pick that, it's not stereoscopic. And then hit OK. And then the next step is to create the inject setting. So click the plus button icon again and say create inject preset. Proxy. Check right here, pick a random location because it doesn't matter because you can choose that when actually create proxy. But in a format, pick QuickTime because we created with QuickTime. But instead of the 2K Cineform, you actually create the 2K DNxHR, this one. And then you go ahead and click OK. Great, so now we create the ingestion right here. If you see format right here, ingest QuickTime. And that is the file you need to output it so Premiere can import that inject setting. So go ahead and hit export preset. And that is my folder, right? So go ahead and save this preset right here. Okay, now the same workflow. Go back to Premiere, right click in the same footage, say create a proxy. As you see, you will not see that proxy we just created because it's not injected yet. So you want to add ingest preset right here. Go find a 2K DNX HR one. And go ahead and hit open right here. If you're using a PC, which one should you choose? Cinephone or DNX HR? Personally, I found that DNX HR is more streamlined and faster in general in the PC environment, in my environment, but that doesn't mean you're okay. So I would suggest you play around to try the DNX HR and the Cinephone to see which one works best. And then bring them to the next question. What about if you're on Mac? Well, Mac, you use ProRes 422 proxy, and I will demo you how to do it in Mac right now. So now we are on a Mac. As you see, I have a stereoscopic video. The video is 5.7K times 5.7K. It's pretty big file if you play that right here. Uh, as you see, the video is very struggle. It's skipping frame, as you see right here, the indicator. So again, I want to create a proxy. But this time, I want to create a stereoscopic proxy in the Mac. So go ahead and open Adobe Media Encoder right here. So right here, create encoding preset. And then is a quick time. And then right here is a ProRes 422 proxy. That's the one you should pick. And right here is unlink that. For stereo, I like to use 204A, time 204A. I found that this size will give me the best resolution versus the best fast rendering time. So that's good for me. And then there's a square pixel. So the rest should be looking good. And most important part here to check the VR video, and that is actually a stereoscopic over and under. Hit OK. The next thing we want to do is to create an inject preset just like before. And pick the 2K ProRes stereo proxy uh, preset we just created and then hit OK. And the last step, again, look at here the inject setting. You want to export that preset. Okay, now we can go back to Premiere right in here. Let's go to the project folder, right click on the footage. And then here, say proxy, say create proxy, and then go ahead and pick quick time. It's actually haven't added yet, so go ahead and add that. And the inject preset right here, and pick the 2K ProRes stereo preset. Go ahead and open that, and just hit OK. And then we start a render. But as you see that, the rendering time is actually pretty slow, because that is a pretty slow 2013 Mac. So that's why I mentioned that sometimes I just don't want to ingest and create proxy for all the footage. I want to just create footage for what I need, actually getting pretty fast. So I don't want to sit there and wait for media income to ingest all my footage. So there you go. That's how you create your custom proxy file for both mono and stereo for both PC and Mac for 260 video editing. So now no more freezing and no more hair pulling anymore.
So if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumb up. The next video is gonna be major of this workflow because I'm gonna show you my secret workflow how you render AK X264 or X265 260 video directly from Adobe Premiere or Adobe Media Encoder and upload on YouTube and we work as an AK mono or stereo 260 video. No more double encoding in Horizon and cut the wait time in half. So you will have a way faster streamlined workflow and still maintain the best amount of image quality possible. So I will show you exactly how to do that in my next tutorial on my secret rendering workflow. See you next time.